Hello everyone. Welcome to Naso Academy. In the previous lecture, we understood the history of C++ and we got to know that C++ was developed during the period 1979 and 1983. During this period, C++ got its name as well. But what happened after that? There were many different versions introduced after the development of C++. In this lecture, our focus will be on understanding all those versions and we will also understand what features they have incorporated in C++. So the name of this lecture is versions of C++. Without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. There is only one topic of this lecture and the name of the topic is versions of C++. So let's proceed further and let's try to understand what are the different versions of C++ we have and what features they have incorporated. As I have mentioned this already, C++ was developed during the period 1979 and 1983. But it was first standardized in 1998 and the name of the version was C++ 98. This was the first standardized version and this version was standardized by ISO, which is International Organization for Standardization. This version has standardized many existing features including classes, templates and exception handling. Apart from this, in this version, for the first time, STL, that is Standard Template Library, was introduced with features such as vectors, lists, and maps. After C++ 98, C++ 0.3 came in 2003 and it came with minor improvements and bug fixes to C++ 98. After C++ 0.3, C++ 11 came in 2011. This means after many years when C++ 03 was introduced, C++ 11 came and it was also known as Modern C++. It was known as Modern C++ because it has introduced many modern features such as auto keyword, lambda expressions and not only this, range based for loops. After C++ 11, C++ 14 came in 2014 and it was considered as the small extension to C++ because it has introduced some small updates to C++ such as generic lambdas, return type deductions from normal functions, etc. After C++ 14, C++ 17 came in 2017 and it has improved the performance and usability of C++. This specific version has introduced many features which has improved performance and usability of C++ such as structured bindings and parallel algorithms. After C++ 17, C++ 20 came in 2020 and this was considered as the biggest update after C++ 11. Why it was considered the biggest update? Because it came with some biggest updates in the history of C++, it included core routines, modules, calendar and time-based utilities in C++ programming language. After C++ 20, C++ 23 came in 2023 and it came with minor improvements to ranges, lambdas and standard libraries. So these are all the versions of C++ that have been introduced so far. And right now, in this course, we will focus on C++ 17. By focusing on C++ 17, I mean that we will cover the older versions, that is, we will cover the features of the older versions. Along with this, we will also cover some of the features of C++ 17. Now you might be thinking, we have newer versions such as C++20 and C++23. Why aren't we covering these versions in this course? 
why are we going to cover C++ 17 in this course? There are a couple of reasons which I want to mention and for this purpose, let's proceed further and let's see what are those reasons. Why C++ 17? There are some reasons why we should consider C++ 17 in this course. The very first reason is, C++ 17 is stable and widely adopted. C++ 17 is stable because it is accepted by almost all the compilers which are available in C++. Apart from this, it is widely adopted by the community. Therefore, working with C++ 17 is considered the best choice. The second reason is, it comes with modern features that do not overwhelm beginners. This means C++17 comes with modern features such as structured bindings and parallel algorithms, but they do not overwhelm beginners. That is, they are not that difficult to understand by beginners. Hence, we are considering C++17 because it has those features which are considered better for beginners to understand compared to the features which are introduced in C++20 and C++23. The third reason is C++20 and 23 are great but not entry level. C++20 and C++23 are considered great. They have many features which are needed in the modern world. But they are not good for beginners. As beginners, we must start C++ with ease. And C++17 will let us do that. By considering C++17, we can get started with C++ as quickly as possible. Now here comes the fourth reason. It is suitable for interviews and competitive programming. C++17 is considered suitable for interviews because industry interviewers still ask questions from C++17 as they consider that the candidate must have at least the knowledge of C++17 and for competitive programming also, C++17 is considered the preferred choice. So these are some of the reasons why we should consider C++17 for this course and I hope these reasons are completely clear to you. With this, we are done with all the reasons and we are done with the versions of C++. This means we are done with this topic and we are done with this lecture as well. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.